Greetings and welcome to the Zebra Crossing. Our guest today is Mr. Pankaj Dighe, a gold medalist in electrical engineering, currently serving as a national sales head for India at Carl Dung's GmbH, a prominent manufacturer of combustion equipment with a worldwide footprint. Previously, Mr. Dighe held the role of Global Key Accounts Manager at Honeywell International overseeing the Asia-Pacific region. Today, we will be talking about energy, global warming and climate change. So first of all, what is thermal energy and how is it utilized in, in industrial applications? Okay, so the roots of the thermal energy goes in a you know, long ago. Uh, in the prehistoric era, mm -hmm. when the humans uh, started to uh, <coughs> strike two stones on each other and he generated the sparks and from that spark he started to generate the flame or the fire mm -hmm. and he invented that this fire can be utilized as an energy to overcome against the uh, we say winter or cold and he also uh, started to use that fire or energy to you know um, bake the foods and all that the particularly the meats and all that and that's how he started to utilize the energy in the form of heat okay um, as the um, days goes and you know in the 18th century when James Watt invented steam mm -hmm. And they started to use that steam as an energy to rotate many turbines gener okay. to generate the energy. And you know that's the reason uh, Europe started to rule the world, particularly in 18th century. Okay. As the days goes, in 19th century when Thomas Alva Edison invented electricity and then um, in USA and then you know when electricity used as a source of energy you the americans are started to rule the world okay so you know it clearly states that those who have the hold on energy they will rule the world as the days goes in 20th century when uh, in the middle east uh, they in they have found the storage of crude oil and with the help of that the very uh, you know the undeveloped area of a middle east started grown very rapidly because the crude oil is crude oil is the need of the complete world right now yes. everything is working on the the uh, energy produced from the crude oil mm -hmm. uh, you know from the refine uh, from the refineries once you process the crude oil uh, different by products are separated like yes. um, furnace oil or um, high viscosity oil and then you have the diesel petrol uh, kerosene and then you also have the uh, lpg mm -hmm. which is a mixture of propane and butane and you know all these fuels are the source of energy so this is how the um, different uh, eras uh, and different uh, regions have developed with the help of this source of energies okay can you tell us how energy has revolutionized oh the world over the past few centuries so as i just explained that the initially with the help of steam they have mm -hmm. developed many you know turbines and engines which runs on the steam for example they uh, run the railways on this with the help of this steam mm -hmm. once electricity developed then they use the electricity and now with the help of crude oil so and in the you know in the recent days not uh, so early but uh, um, methane or say natural gas is the main source of energy okay. for the complete goal. So the energy transmit uh, energy source transforms from uh, st uh, from say electrical uh, operated equipment to diesel or liquid mm -hmm. uh, solid fire equipments to diesel fire equipments. Now it's a gas fire equipments. Mm -hmm. So this is how it's transformed from last few eras. Initially uh, in the old era, people use solid fuel for example you know wood coal so these are the form of a solid fuel so mm -hmm. they use this solid fuel to generate the energy mm -hmm. then liquid fuels diesel particularly or furnace oil or petrol or kerosene and then lpg and nowadays uh, people are using natural gas to generate the heat or the energy okay so as the types of energies that we're consuming has changed has yeah. the demand for it also changed yeah of course you know, if development of any country, mm -hmm. it depends on what resources you have. So, suppose if you have the natural resources, if you have the uh, demographics, and if you don't have the energy resource, energy sources, 
they need there are restrictions on the development mm-hmm. you take the in the recent past particularly particularly for the 21st century the dense demographic or high demographic areas like china and india very rapidly growing because of the availability of the energy from different sources mm-hmm. and slowly they transfer from solid to liquid to gaseous energy for the utilization you know these days uh, china is acting as a manufacturing hub or manufacturing factory for the whole world okay. and how they produce this equipments with the help of this energy hmm. you re- take any example of your our daily living you say takes the steel hmm. cement to build the houses our clothes food uh, ceramics glasses automotives the car we drive mm-hmm. everything to make these products we require this energy okay uh, heating energy so so energy is the most uh, important thing for the development of the any of the country okay what are your thoughts on the future of energy and considering sustainability and environmental concerns so you know past a uh, few uh, maybe last two centuries mm-hmm. when when uh, people started use different form of these fuels to generate the energy basically how we need to consider how the energy generates so uh, fuel is basically a hydrocarbon ch mm-hmm. hydrocarbons yes. and when we mix oxygen in the hydrocarbons mm. and give the ignition the result will be the heat and it's not only the heat plus okay. heat plus some form of water vapor and a volume of carbons mm-hmm. in the in the in the form of either carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide mm-hmm. so this emissions carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide these are the basic reasons for the global warming mm-hmm. whenever you have the carbon particles available in the atmosphere what they absorbs the heat from the sun and release in the surrounding so because of this the global warming is started the temperature rising rising has started and also the pollution is the major issue for all the metro cities or globally this the issue is very serious issue and that is the reason uh, people come together from the different uh, uh, I, i can say the different countries come together they make a platform and they decided that let's restrict the temperature rise and this is called as you know you must be aware the paris agreement between yes. the different country all the, between the different countries that now we have to restrict the temperature rise up to maximum 1.5 degrees celsius okay. uh, by 2030 and to cut down the pollution by 50% in the coming years and all the countries have decided to uh, reduce this temp- global warming temperature but how to achieve this because you know for the growth for the development we need the energy the energy will develop with the help of carbohydrates burning mm-hmm. the carbohydrates and once you start to burn the carbohydrates the carbon particles will be there mm-hmm. and that's a that's the issue that that's the point when all the countries have started to think about the alternate fuel okay. which we called as a non conventional energies non conventional mm-hmm. source of energy we can say wind energy solar energy mm-hmm. which are available naturally with the help of that we can generate the energy but that is not sufficient and it has having a very uh, limitations i will give an example like north portion of the world or very south portion of the world they have a very limited uh, sun availability mm-hmm. so they can't generate the uh, energy with the help of only sun on top of that only few months that sun is also available maybe 3 months rest all the months they have the heavy winters and availability of sun is very low so mm-hmm. they have that restriction so um the need of developing an alternative fuel which can give us a very clean energy clean energy is mm-hmm. the most important topic during these uh, days and different um, uh, uh, government agencies and the industries are in uh, process to develop that and predominantly they have found a very good source of this energy is the hydrogen okay now when we have the restrictions like the crude oil is available only in middle east mm-hmm. then uh, like solar energy is available in the central part of the earth like india now these countries having a good but limitation is on the north part so hydrogen is the one of the most important source of generating energy because it don't have any carbon so 
after um, combustion of hydrogen and oxygen and giving the ignition whatever energy will or heat will generate it won't have any carbon so mm -hmm. that uh, uh, carbon emission will control with the help of this process the second most important uh, point is how to generate then hydrogen so far the best possible method what people have found is uh, with the help of water electrolysis they separate hydrogen and oxygen okay. and they are separated hydrogen they use as a fuel hmm. so this is how they have started to use hydrogen as a fuel to generate the electricity okay so on a little bit going back to what you said about non-conventional fuels do you think they will be able to meet our future energy needs yeah of course uh, we we have we don't have an option if we want mm -hmm. to you know um take out take this uh, environment or the earth similar as we have today to our next generation we have to protect it hmm. and that will be only possible if we control the temperature rise and the pollution hmm. and to make it uh, as it is uh, to keep it as it is we have to work with alternate fuels so that we can continue our growth global growth economics finances whatever related to this and also to control the um, pollutions and global warming so non-conventional sources we have the wind energy solar energy uh, geothermal energy tidal energy there are many forms but of course it is having all the limitations mm -hmm. the need of the uh, of earth for the energy is very huge so the best possible uh, way is to use hydrogen as a fuel in the future. Uh, many countries, I will say particularly Japan and Germany and other European countries, they have already started to work on this solution. Germany has already started to use hydrogen as a fuel for the railways. So as per my information, there are at least 15 railways are there which are running on hydrogen as a fuel. Oh wow. Yeah. Will technology play a part in all this? Yeah, of course. So, um, you know, every every coin has two sides. So mm -hmm. it looks very prominent that, okay, it's very easy to generate the electricity uh, from water, generate the hydrogen and use that hydrogen as a fuel to generate the energy. But it's not so easy because uh, from water to generate the hydrogen, the process is electrolysis and yeah. to for the electrolysis we need some again energy hmm. now how to available if we use our conventional energy to electrolyze the water to generate the hydrogen there is no use of course so what is the best way so best way is use either wind energy or solar energy to electrolysis the water and generate the hydrogen and store it hmm. but again storing of hydrogen is not so easy it again starts to condense it again start to get in the form of water so it is having that limitation of course technology is plays an important role that how um, how we can electrolyze and store the hydrogen and use as a fuel for the different industrial applications like boilers or yeah. ovens baking ovens uh, fryers and insulation different processes are there Let's talk about hydrogen as a fuel. Uh -huh. What potential do you see for hydrogen in the energy sector? So when um, when the global giants decided to work on the alternate fuel, and the, of course, to um, the main agenda is to reduce the global warming, mm -hmm. to control the rising temperature. So one of two major areas are there where from where this pollution and global warming comes one is the vehicle you know all the vehicles are working either on uh, running either on diesel petrol mm -hmm. gasoline or some gases and all the industries who burning the fuel to generate the heat mm -hmm. so these are the two permanent areas so in, there are two ways either run the vehicles on electricity we mm -hmm. call it as ev which is a very popular norm nowadays yes. most of the people they are looking forward to have electric vehicles mm -hmm. Once you uh, charge it, it can run up to 500 or 600 kilometers uh, uh, in a single charge and that could be a solution to control the emissions. Hmm. But again, to charge the vehicle you need some energy or electricity which can be generated either from the conventional fuels. We want to avoid it and that's the reason hydrogen which is now called as a very clean fuel comes in a picture. As I have just mentioned that um, Germany has already started to use hydrogen as a fuel for the railways 
and I heard that in coming days there will be a railway on in India which will be run on hydrogen as a fuel. So now how to utilize hydrogen as a fuel? Of course for the automotive they design the cars mm -hmm. or trucks which can run on hydrogen mm -hmm. and at the same time we can use the hydrogen as a fuel in the different industries to run the boilers or ovens or furnaces to process the steel and all that. Hmm. So these are the two prominent areas where we can use the hydrogen. Okay. Now every fuel has its you know characteristics like they have the calorific values and densities and all the fuels have different characteristics like natural gas have different, LPG have different, hydrogen have different. By the time we have already have the infrastructure for the natural gases hmm. or the LPGs because LPG can be transport transport from one place to another in the form of liquid and with the vaporizer we can convert it into gas and utilize it. Hmm. Same way the natural gas like in the Middle East ample quantity of natural gas is available. We transport it from Middle East to the rest of the world in the form of liquid okay. which is called as LNG. Hmm. Okay? then it vaporizes and make it compress hmm. and again ship from say port to the um, uh, buildings or industry and then from there compressed it can convert to pipe natural gas and utilize it okay but that is not the case with hydrogen we cannot transfer right now we cannot transfer from hydrogen at one place to other place and then because of its characteristics we cannot use the same infrastructure what we have built for natural gas for the hydrogen. Hmm. So what the solution? And we have a very uh, excellent solution found by our uh, technicians or scientists that let's utilize the hydrogen with mixing with natural gas hmm. and use the existing grid which we have designed for natural gas. Okay. Okay. So what they have, they generate the hydrogen with the help of electrolysis of water, sun energy, electrolysis, generate the hydrogen and mix in the natural gas pipeline. Hmm. So what they have decided let the ratio will be 80% of natural gas, 20% of hydrogen and they can use that mixer or that with the same grid what we have designed right now for the natural gas and with that grid this mixed gas we don't need to be any change in our existing system. Okay. Almost 20% hydrogen, 80% natural gas mm -hmm. the properties are similar uh, to the pre-designed system. So this is the best way. So Japan have started this, Germany is going to start it and many other countries like I know that Korea, there are few automotive plants for the design of the paint shop. They have started to utilize 20% hydrogen and 80% natural gas so far because hmm. the, we want to use our existing system without having extra capital expenditure. We can use the existing system and uh, reduce the carbon footprint. Okay. Correct. So going forward that would be the solution like bigger companies particularly the steel manufacturing or automotive manufacturing companies they can generate the hydrogen at their plant level it, itself mm. and mix with natural gas and utilize it. Okay. So this is the current solution to use the hydrogen as a fuel. So we talked about the advantages of it and the challenges but can you tell me how hydrogen as a fuel can be used in different industries or segments? So I just mentioned um, two are the very prominent areas where we can immediately look hydrogen to be utilized. Mm -hmm. One is the automotive, railways and sec other one is the industry. Industrial from the in all the industrial manufacturing processes we can use hydrogen. Mm -hmm. In the automotive we can use hydrogen as a fuel so we need to uh, develop the engines which are suitable for hydrogen as a fuel. So I know that I think Toyota is already working on it and BMW, many other, particularly German and Japanese, both automotive makers are, they are very advanced stage uh, to develop the engines for the hydrogen. Third one is the uh, railways. Mm -hmm. I just ex uh, explain you that uh, they have already started to use hydrogen as a fuel for the railway. And uh, in the industrial sectors, uh, I will give the example like, um, steel industry so there are different processes like hardening melting holding uh, different processes are there in the steel industry okay. to, pro to process the steel manufacturing hmm. and it needs a furnace which runs on the fuels 
uh, to generate the heat. Hmm. So these furnaces can run on hydrogen or hydrogen plus natural gases. Uh, boilers can run on hydrogen as a fuel. Hmm. Uh, in the food industry, bakeries can run on the hydrogen as a fuel. Hmm. Automotive paint shop oven and there are air heating units. These can run on hydrogen fuel. And the base part is there is no carbon particles. So very safe fuel, safe environment. Ceramic industry is there. Fertilizers, refineries. So you know wherever you want energy or heat, we can utilize hydrogen as a fuel. Okay. Now with so many changes in so many different sectors and industries, will this impact our, eco on e our economy? Yeah, of course. Like, um, we have to see both ways right now because all the countries are now dependent on some other way with the uh, region of Middle East mm -hmm. where the uh, crude oil is available. So they import all the crude oil. So the economy is largely dependent on the imports of this energy, mm -hmm. correct? Suppose today we develop our local sources to generate the hydrogen. Our dependency on that particular region or particular form of energy will reduce. Mm -hmm. So this will help to boost your economy also, number one. Number two, we know that of course um, ample quantity of crude oil is available in the Middle East, but uh, there are limitations how much evacuation, how much crude oil you can take it from the reservoirs okay. the global the all the globally all the countries are developing developing means the production capacity of the country manufacturing capacities and the living of standard is increasing you can take an example of china or india which mm. is having the highest demographics and the growth of that country gdp is more than 6 or 7% yes correct so that means in every 7 or 8 years your GDP will be double, hmm. correct? Hmm. Your manufacturing capacities, your consuming capacities will be double. Living hmm. up standard will be high. So in that case, when your GDP is double, your energy needs will be also double. Yes. How will you meet it? Hmm. Because you have the limitations of the crude oils or other form of energies. Hmm. So you have to find the alternates. So addition of this GDP can be come from these alternate fuels or the from uh, uh, hydrogen as an energy. So to for the, our future, we have to work on hydrogen or and also other um, non-conventional fuels to meet our needs. Okay. How can industries and governments collaborate to promote the adoption of hydrogen? Okay. Now, um, as I mentioned, to generate the hydrogen, a lot of um, um, infrastructure is required. Mm. Electrolysis, storage tanks and all that. So. You know, the small scale industry is a small industry. It is out of their coverage to invest so much amount for the capital, uh, capital equipments and then generate hydrogen and utilize it. Government can give a push, give subsidiaries, hmm. subsidies, and um, they can also have the expertise, technology from other countries hmm. to uh, to produce or to make the practices, make the standards that how we can adopt this. Uh, processes in our country. Every country has a different processes. Yes. So, uh, as I mentioned that Japan government is having good, great push. Same is like Germany. Hmm. The government has formed the committees of the technical expertise. These, uh, committee, these committees are defining the standards, what kind of equipment required, what kind of safety standards required, what kind of energy uh, grid systems required to develop considering the next say 50 years or so. Mm -hmm. So this is how government can help to um, make this technology available with the all the people, those who are very, mu very much interested to utilize the hydrogen as a fuel. Okay. What role do you think investments and funding play in driving this innovation? Um, capital investment is high yes. for, at this moment. At mm -hmm. this moment, because still the uh, inventions or the developments are stage are a very early stage, and you know, uh, research and development requires a fund. Correct. So of course, all the investments and uh, capital requirement, finances uh, will require for these uh, inventions. So far, I know that uh, many industrialists uh, or bigger institutions they came forward and. Uh, they are working very rapidly, very sincerely on uh, this kind of uh, non-conventional energy sources. Mm -hmm. um, 
I know that uh, few uh, industries from India, they are working very seriously. Reliance is there, Adani Ports, Adani okay. is there. They are working very um, uh, sincerely and with a high funding to de develop the sources and the processes for the hydrogen and other non-conventional mm -hmm. fuels. Because that's the, that's the future, that is the need of the future. Okay. So apart from investing, what can businesses and individuals like myself or our audience, what can we do? to promote the sustainable future so this is this is the requirement for our generation or the next generation because mm -hmm. we want to pass this this earth as it is to our next generation yes. climate change global warming we have to control it we don't yeah. have an option at the same time we want to keep our growth pace also hmm. so the next generation they can work on the developments particularly non conventional fuel developments everyone the responsibility not lies with only government or big industries, it lies with everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, how we can utilize non-conventional sources like solar energy, it's not difficult to utilize solar energy or at home also. Mm -hmm. There are, you know, solar cooker are available yes. to cook the food, you know. So many, this kind of um, equi equipments we can start. There are small uh, solar fans are available now. Mm -hmm. When uh, people come together, every society can have the solar panel on their rooftop and they can use that solar energy for the you know the uh, evening lights or uh, the smaller needs of the society smaller heat pumps they can run on the mm. solar energy so if people come together you know the particularly the next generation who is techno savvy they know how to utilize these resources they come if they come together and uh, you know develop like this um, like solar roof uh, solar panel on the roof mm. smaller uh, wind energies and that can uh, generate the local energy. We can use uh, local energy at a local place also. So okay. that can reduce the burden on the governments hmm. to you know imports or generate the heavy energy and utilize for the residential. So may the, the the field of energy is very vast. The, the, there is a lack of expertise right now. Okay. So there is a huge scope for the young generations like you and other people, those who can come in this field the need of green hydrogen from the water is the is the is the need of the era need of the future hmm. uh, everyone has to work on it to give the clean energy for the future okay what advice would you give to individuals who are trying to pursue a career in this industry okay so um, i will suggest to have the in-depth knowledge of the uh, energy generation mm -hmm. uh, particularly with the non-conventional the huge uh, uh, market is available for the non-conventional, particularly in the solar, uh, in the in the in the field of solar energy, hmm. wind energy, and upcoming um, hydrogen energy. The future cars will be run on hydrogen. The future fuel will be the hydrogen. Hmm. So the scope will be future. B b scope will be the uh, huge scope will be there. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any final thoughts or key takeaways you'd like to share? I will just say that it's everyone's duty to work on the climate change, environment and energy because we have to protect our earth. Mm -hmm. yes. okay. Thank you so much for your insights today. It was a delight talking to you. Thank you. And thank you for the listeners to joining in today. Do like and subscribe and plant a tree.